now let's do our first SEC spring football focus today. The Mississippi State Bulldogs wrapped up spring practice over the weekend to help us review how review how spring practice went overall and how that spring game went. We bring in from the Clarion Ledger, Brandon Marcello joins us here on the New Sentinel Sports page. You can follow him on Twitter. It's B Marcello at B Marcello on Twitter. Brandon Vince and Jesse Smith. How you doing, Brandon? I'm good. How are you guys? We're doing good. We appreciate it. Uh, so what were a couple from, from camp overall, including that spring game, what were a, a couple of the most significant things that uh, that came out of camp, in your opinion? Well, uh, number one, uh, Tyler Russell is looks like he's ready to be the starter at quarterback and not have to share snaps with Chris Rell for the first time in his career. And uh, number two, the defense, especially the defensive line, very deep, and they've got a lot of uh, players that can move and switch around there, and, and that's what they've been building toward the last few years, getting deep on the defensive line, and it looks like they've gotten to that point. One of the things, or one of the notes that I saw coming out of the spring game is that all the SEC cornerback Jonathan Banks lined up at receiver. Was that just kind of fun for the fans in this game, or is that something that, that you'll see come this, this fall? I think it was something fun for the fans, and you know I, they talk about it a little bit last year, and then you ask every week, and they go, "Yeah, we're not even practicing that." In fact, I think Jonathan Banks, Jonathan Banks, told me after the game that he just went up to Coach Mullen before the game the night before and asked if he could play some receivers. So nothing, nothing too much into that. What about the rest of that receiving group? If 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 Tyler Russell is going to give them more in the passing game, what kind of weapons on the perimeter does he have? He has several seniors that. That you know, Dan Mullins challenged to kind of step up after having kind of off years last season. You know, Chad Bumpus and Arcedo Clark and Chris Smith, who is actually a former high school teammate of Tyler Russell's. And what they got now, though, is some varying, some different type of receivers. Joe Morrow, who's they're really their first big, tall, deep threat that they've had under Dan Mullen. He's a redshirt freshman. Jamie on Lewis, who's a small, shifty receiver who can do some things in space. They have different type of types of receivers now, whereas in the past everybody seemed to be the same body type, the same skill level. But this, they have some varying guys where they can do some things differently. And really, we saw it this this spring where they were throwing the ball a lot more because they're going to throw the ball more than they have in the past, and they're trying to work out some kinks in that passing game. But it, it was very clear that they've got some different type of guys on this team this year to do some different things offensively. Uh, address defensive tackle Quay Evans. He had three sacks in the first half of the spring game, and uh, a true freshman. Like I said, is, is it, was that just kind of a fluke, or is this a big time guy that they really expected big things from? Yeah, I mean, he was one of the top defensive linemen in the country coming out of high school, and enrolled early. And you know, Jonathan Banks and and Josh Boyd, a defensive tackle, was talking about earlier in the spring how he kind of had a lazy streak in him, and uh, two weeks ago he kind of turned it turned it on. And really had a good finish to the spring, I thought, and, and everybody else. And he had three sacks in that first half of that spring game. He's pushing guys around. He's got a lot to polish, though, but he's a guy that's going to play some time. I don't know if he'll start, but he's going to play a little bit next season as a freshman. But he's just one of, I think, eight defensive linemen that recruited in this class that was ranked in the top five nationally by, by scout.com. There's a lot of guys that are coming in. And uh, but Quay Evans definitely is going to be in the rotation next year. Brandon, how hard was it to take this game seriously, given that it was played on a what a fifty or fifty-five yard field? Fifty-five yards. It went from a seventy-yard field to a sixty-yard field to fifty-five by the time we got there. It was uh, it was like watching arena football. And <laughs> I think uh, even Chad Bumpus, he went and, uh, had a triple reverse. And he got knocked back into the staging area um, for a safety. So, wasn't real football. I asked Dan Mullins if he'd like to play on a 100 yard field. And he says, nah, I'm okay with this stuff. So, we'll see. They were trying something new with a concert slash uh, football scrimmage. But uh, if you're a football, football purist, it wasn't necessarily, you know, football. Who was, who was performing? <laughs> uh, Sugarland, a uh, country band. Okay. Hmm. Brandon Marcello from the Clarion Ledger joining us as we review how spring practice went for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Let's sit on a couple of groups that we haven't had a chance to, to get you. I just want a couple quick thoughts on 
the linebackers. Uh, the we'll, we'll start with them, and then I'll get to the rest of them. Just give a, a few sentences on the linebackers. Well, the linebackers, they got Cam Lawrence coming back, and who was a guy that kind of by the middle of the season was being leaned on quite a bit, not only for production, he led the team in tackles, but also for his, his smarts. He could read offenses, his calling plays out for the team, um, and doing some things there. Uh, middle linebackers, where they're trying to find a guy right now, Brandon Wilson, who's the second leading tackler on the team, is gone. They've got two guys balanced for that spot right now, Fernando Bohanna. And Benardrick McKinney and McKinney really had a strong finish to the, the end of spring, had an interception in the spring game, and the coaches have compared him to former Mississippi State linebacker K.J. Wright, who's playing for the Seattle Seahawks, just because he's a, he's a long and ranging athletic guy who can do some things for you that also might get up on the on the edge and, and rush uh, the quarterback. Um, they, they've got some guys there, not, not a lot of depth right now, but um, they do have some playmakers returning uh, from last season. Brandon, we just got about a minute with you. Just give me the most notable things from the DBs, the running backs, and the offensive line. Well, the fifth of backs, you know, obviously Corey Broomfield and Jonathan Banks, both all SEC freshmen a few years ago. Banks turned out a chance to the NFL. Very good player. They're going to be deep at cornerback. Safety's an issue because Nico Whitley missed spring practice with a ruptured Achilles tendon. They feel like they're going to be okay there, and he'll be back full speed. And then running back, you know, they have to replace Vic Ballard, but they've got Ladarius Perkins who backed him up and shared snaps for both the last two or three years. They have two talented guys at Redshirt last season. One of them actually played, Nick Griffin and Josh Robinson. In fact, Josh Robinson might be the best out of the three. They'll put all three split, split some snaps. They're different type of runners as well. And then the offensive line really, I think, is the biggest question on the on the on the team. They've got a lot of holes to fill. They're mixing and matching guys, guys going from right tackle to left tackle all year. But they have Gabe Jackson and Tobias Smith, both all SEC caliber guys. Excellent information on the Mississippi State Bulldogs from the Clarion Ledgers. Brandon Marcello, you can follow him on Twitter, B Marcello, M A R C E L L O. Brandon, really appreciate it. Enjoy the summer, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you again soon. All right, thank you. Thank you, Brandon. That is uh, Brandon Marcello from the Clarion Ledger.